Hi everybody, welcome to the Lexus Virtual Classroom. I'm Melissa O'Connell, your Lexus Technology Specialist, and today we are exploring a very well-equipped GS F-Sport. Let's learn together. Parking sensors are integrated into the corners of the front bumper and on either side of the grill. You have four additional parking sensors located straight across the rear bumper. To open the trunk of your GS with the smart access key, just push and hold the power trunk button. If your GS is equipped with a power opener, it's going to power open for you. If it's not, it will pop and release the trunk lock. Another option for opening your trunk is to just keep your smart key in your pocket or your bag. Then you can use the touch pad that's located just on the right hand side. Give it a push. Again, if you have a power trunk, it will open all the way for you. And if not, it's just gonna pop and you can lift it up. Now you have access to your trunk. You have a key lock cylinder on the left-hand side for emergencies. To manually close the trunk, just use the handle located on the right side. To power close your trunk, simply push the button. If you have a power trunk closer and you choose to manually close the trunk by pulling down from the handle. And if for some reason you just don't get it closed all the way, the GS power trunk seal will close automatically for you. Taking a look inside the trunk, make sure to hold on to the bracket for your front license plate. You might also have a cargo net. Your cargo net will attach top, and bottom on both sides at the rear of the trunk. Just on the right side, you'll see your first aid kit. And then you have a tab to lift up and you'll locate the towing eyelet for emergency towing only. In case you have to tow your GS in an emergency, go ahead and remove the towing eyelet, remove the screwdriver, and flip it around to the flat head screwdriver side. Did you catch that? If your screwdriver is stored and the Phillips head portion is showing, just pull it apart. You have a flat head screwdriver on the other side. Then you can insert the Phillips head side, line it up so that it slots into place. Now you have a flat head screwdriver ready to go. We're going to take these tools up to the front of the vehicle, but we need one more item. You need the tire iron or some other type of heavy pipe that's going to fit into the eyelet hole in order to tighten it down for emergency towing. Hidden in the grill on the driver's side of the vehicle is the mount for the towing eyelet. You're gonna cover the flathead part of your screwdriver come into the bottom because this is a GS. If it's a GSF, the clip is in a different spot. Just really carefully, as soon as it pops out, you can go ahead and put your screwdriver down. Then just remove this gently. Make sure that you don't break it. Just don't pull it out. It does have a little tether on it. And then you'll insert the eyelet Tighten it by hand first. And then once you have it tightened by hand as far as you can go, then you're going to use your tire iron or any other type of heavy piping. I don't know about you, I don't drive around with random heavy pipes in my car, so I would need to use tire iron. Just tighten it down and then you'll be able to do an emergency towing if you needed to. Now clearly, I'm just sitting here on the ground doing this and uh, if I can do it, you can do it if you have to. Otherwise, call roadside assistance. That's what they're there for. When you need to put everything back, just work in reverse. Make sure that you're really careful with whatever you are using to create more torque to tighten or loosen the eyelet. You wouldn't want to accidentally damage the front of your beautiful vehicle. We'll just go ahead, loosen this up, remove it, keep track of everything. You want to put it all back where it was. Tuck in the back portion of the clip 
and then it'll just snap into place. It's actually very simple as long as you know what you're doing. Some of the important tools for changing a tire, including your wheel lock key. Lift up and pull forward. Don't try to pull all the way straight up. Notice the arrow pointing to the left of the vehicle. That's just a reminder for the direction that you need to insert your wheel lock key back into the housing. Lift up and then push down. You do want to take the time to get it snugly in its spot so it doesn't rattle around and make noise. The lug nut with the wave pattern is your wheel lock. The wheel lock key is custom fit to release that lug nut. Notice that when it's time to put the cover back, you want to insert these posts into their spots so that this is nice and secure. Moving to the left side of the trunk, you'll see another tab. Lift up to remove that panel and you'll see a small storage cubby this is a great place to store your cargo net if it's not in use. Some people even keep their owner's manuals there if they aren't going to use them on a regular basis and they may not want them in their glove compartment. Lifting up on the center tab for the large cover, you'll see another tool for changing a tire as well as your jack and your spare tire. To get to your jack, lift up on the sound dampening styrofoam and remove that so that you can then remove your jack. When you're ready to put it all back together, notice there's an arrow and it has an L letting you know it goes on the left side just in case you forget. You want to get it nice and snug. The right side has another sound dampening piece with an arrow and an R for right so that you know where that nests to keep everything nice and quiet. Snap it all back into place. Be aware that inside behind your tail lamps, there is an access port for technicians. If this is turned and removed accidentally, uh, just make sure that you put it back so that you can keep this area nice and clean. And that's where a technician would access some of the wiring for your tail lamps. You'll see it has three tabs to line up and give a twist and then it's secure. You have the same on the right hand side. Some quick tips about the GS fuel door. It's push to release. So if you push and it doesn't open, it means it's locked. You can unlock from either the back passenger door, which would unlock your entire GS, or you can unlock from the driver's door handle. Put your hand in the driver's door handle. Now the driver's door and the fuel door are open. If you decide that you prefer to unlock from the passenger door, when you put your hand inside this door handle, all the doors are unlocked. So you could go ahead and open the fuel door and then relock your GS with the smart access system. Just touch the indentation on the front of the door handle. We'll take a closer look at that in a moment. What I like about this is that the entire vehicle is locked. You can fuel up and then when you're done, you don't have to unlock yet. Just close the door and you're ready to go. Your smart access key has a button to lock, unlock. We already saw the button to operate the trunk. It also has a panic or an alert button. If you're still using this button to locate your vehicle in a parking lot, go ahead and change over to the Lexus app. The Lexus app has Lexus Inform Remote built right in. It even includes the ability to locate your vehicle in its last parking place. The Lexus Inform subscription service does rely on a cell signal to locate the vehicle, but once it's found it, just zoom in for more detail. Using the Smart Access system, unlocking by putting your hand in any passenger door handle will unlock the entire vehicle. You can lock from any door as well. Just touch the indentation at the front of the door handle. Unlocking from the driver's door will unlock the driver's door only. 
That feature can be customized in the vehicle customization settings in our main menu. I'll show you how to do that later in our tutorial. A popular feature on this vehicle are the auto folding mirrors. That means that when you unlock, they will open, and when you lock, they'll close. It's just a great visual indication that your GS is locked as you're walking away. Keep in mind this feature does need to be turned on, so make sure that you follow along and learn how to do it. Remember that key cylinder on the back of the trunk? You've got one on the driver's door handle also. This is for emergencies. If your key fob battery has died, you can still access the vehicle without using the smart part of the smart key. Just look on the side for the word push. Push on the end to release the catch and then remove the metal key. Now you can use the metal key to unlock and lock your GS. You can even lock your glove compartment with this key. Really handy if you need to secure something in your glove compartment if you're valet parking. To cancel the power trunk feature for a valet lockout, open the glove compartment and locate the trunk opener cancel button. When the button is pushed in, the power trunk opener will operate. When it is out, it's canceled. Once you've canceled the power trunk operation, close and lock your glove box. Now, any of the power operation for the trunk has been disabled. The button on the key fob, the button inside the vehicle, and the touchpad at the back of the trunk will not operate the trunk. So when you valet park, give them your key fob and you hold on to the metal key. When you're ready to restore your power trunk operation, unlock your glove box, open it up, push that button in to reactivate the power trunk operation, and then restore your metal key to your key fob. When you use the metal key to manually unlock the trunk, Make sure to turn the grooved side of the key away from you. Insert the key and twist to the right to pop the trunk. Make sure to restore the key to its spot so that you have it when you need it. Taking a peek inside our second row. The second row outboard seats have latch, for car seats, lower anchors are located on either side. Just reach between the seat cushion to feel for the anchor point. Make sure to follow your car manufacturer's instructions for installing your car seat. There are three top tethers for car seats, one behind each headrest. You'll pass the car seat top tether underneath the headrest Push on the back of the door to open and locate the top tether anchor point. Pull down for the armrest. Lift up for storage. Push on the end to release your cup holders. That metal key also locks your center pass-through. This gives you access to the trunk area for longer cargo. If you need to secure items in your trunk, make sure to lock the center pass-through. Vents for the rear climate control system can be moved side to side, up or down, closed or open. And just below, you have a 12 volt accessory charger. I have a total throwback Thursday kind of random Lexus fun fact for you. Check out what's in the door handles of the back seats of the GS. What do those look like to you? If you're my age, they look like ashtrays. Guess what? They used to be. Open it up and guess what it says? Don't smoke. And they have felt lining and it's basically turned into a storage cubby. That's your fun Lexus fact for the day. 
Looking up at the headliner in the back seats, you have independent lighting for each side passenger, and then the central light will turn on when the dome lights are turned on. Let's take a look inside the front cabin. It's always a good idea to adjust your driver's position before your first drive. The GS has a couple of different equipment level options. This particular version has an 18-way adjustable driver's seat. It can be moved forward, back, you can raise the hip point, lower the hip point, raise the front cushion, lower the front cushion, extend the front cushion. This is really handy if you're tall. You can also retract if it's more comfortable to have it close in. These buttons specifically adjust the wings of the side bolsters on this F Sport package. Push the button on the left to hug them in and the button on the right to open them up. You might like them more open for everyday driving and more snug for more aggressive driving. You can recline your seat back or bring it forward and you have two different levels of lumbar and back support. Forward, releasing back, pushing forward, and releasing back. And the top button operates the system a little bit higher for more of a mid-back support. This support is incredible. It's definitely a you need to feel it to believe it kind of thing. So if you have all of these adjustments on your GS, take the time to get them where you want them because they are fantastic. Next, you'll adjust your steering wheel. You can bring it toward you, push away, raise it up, or bring it down. Now let's adjust our side mirrors. Choose L for left, or R for right, and then use your touchpad to make your adjustments. To power fold your mirrors in, push the top button on the right. When you're ready to open them again, instead of pushing the power fold button, push auto. Then your mirrors will open and be set to automatically fold the next time you lock your vehicle. The side mirrors on the GS can also tilt in reverse. As long as you have a light on by either left or right, your mirrors will tilt in reverse. If you don't want the mirrors to tilt, deselect so that you don't have a light on for either mirror. The tilt angle in reverse is customizable. Let's select the left mirror for demonstration purposes. Shift your GS into reverse. Notice that the mirrors have tilted. Now customize the angle of tilt. Put your GS into park and the mirrors will return to your driving position. To check the new position, come back to reverse and you'll notice that the changes you made have been saved. Once you've saved your seat, steering wheel, and side mirror positions, go ahead and save your driver position memory. You have three different driver buttons that you can save. Make sure your GS is still turned on, push set, and then your number. When you hear the beep, you know it's saved. To recall your position, just push your button. You'll hear a short beep and your seat, steering wheel, and side mirrors will return to the saved positions. Let's take a look at the buttons on the left side. Tucked behind your headlamp stock, you'll see the buttons to increase and decrease the brightness of the lights for your gauges. Just push the up arrow to increase and the down arrow to decrease. You'll have a message displayed on your dash showing you your changes. Your odometer trip meter button, ODO trip, toggles you through your overall miles for the vehicle, trip A, trip B, 
When you see the wrench, you'll have an indication of how many more miles you have before your next oil change. Keep in mind that you're going to service your vehicle every 5,000 miles, but because it uses a full synthetic oil, you only have to oil change every 10. You usually only have to change your oil every 10. Your next screen is blank, if that's your preference. To use the trip feature, simply toggle to trip A or trip B and push and hold to zero it out. If your GS is equipped with a heads up display, you turn it on and off by pushing the HUD button. The heads up display is typically only visible to the driver. The heads up display is projected through the opening at the front of the dash and it is designed to appear like it's floating out over the hood, just in the line of sight for the driver. You can toggle through display options for items that you would like to have appear or not show in your heads up display. The display button, the DISP button, turns on and off the left side display. You have an eco indicator with your gear position and your tack with gear position and your rev indicator with gear position. Your digital speedometer will always be present when it's turned on. You have a toggle to adjust the brightness of your heads up display. It toggles up or down. If you push straight on, you're not going to feel it move. So to make it brighter, push up. To make it less bright, push down. You can raise or lower the heads up display as well. Raise by pushing the up arrow or lower by pushing the down arrow. You'll notice a bracket surrounding the heads up display to make it easier to visualize where you're moving your screen. If you turn on your Lane Keep Assist feature, it will take over the left side spot. Coming to the left, we have a panel of four buttons, traction control on or off, a blank button on this particular vehicle. You may have another feature there. If you do and you have questions about it, leave a comment below and I'll be glad to get back to you. When you turn traction control off by pushing the button, you'll have a message on your dash letting you know that traction control has been turned off. To turn it back on, just push the button again and the message will clear. You can turn on your auto high beams by pushing the button. Notice the message. You'll have a message on your dash letting you know to turn your high beams on. That just means to push your headlamp stock forward. Your heated steering wheel activation, just push a button. When you see a light, then the steering wheel will heat. To turn it off, just push the button again. Taking a look at some buttons on the right-hand side, the GS has an electronic parking brake. It has a manual application or an auto feature. I always recommend using auto on anything that you can. Make life easier. Push to turn it on. You'll see a green light by the word auto. If you need to shift out of park and then back into park, you'll see the P for park and the word park on the bottom right corner of your dash, letting you know that your emergency or parking brake has been engaged. Come out of park and it goes away. If you wanted to turn off the auto feature, just push the button. You'll hear the tone and the light will turn off. Then to apply the parking brake, push down. To turn it off, lift up. It's the opposite motion that we're used to for a hand crank parking brake. Push down to turn it on, pull it up to turn it off. 
You'll also see a message on the left side of your dash when you turn off your automatic parking brake. When you turn it on, you'll see the message letting you know that the shift operation sets or releases the parking brake. Moving up from your automatic parking brake, you'll see a feature called brake hold. Brake hold is one of those really cool things that you can do when you have an electronic parking brake. It holds your foot brake for you when you've come to a complete stop. Just push the button and you'll see the brake hold feature is turned on and active. Hold in gold is what we're looking for. Now I can take my foot off of the foot brake and the brake hold system will hold it for me. When I'm ready to drive, I just need to apply the accelerator. To turn the feature off, just push the button and you'll see the icons turn off on your dash. Headlamp controls are on the left side of the steering wheel. Make sure that the indicator is on auto if you would like your low beam headlights to turn on and off automatically. Twist to the bottom for DRL off, daytime running lights off. This actually means your entire lighting system is off. Come back up for auto, up again for daytime running lights only. And then up at the top for choosing low beam headlights manually. If you turn your low beam headlights on yourself, make sure to come back to auto or off when you turn off and exit your vehicle. Windshield wiper controls are on the right side of the steering wheel. If you see the word auto, that means you have automatic or rain sensing windshield wipers. Just push the button on the end of the stock. You'll see a light turn on and have a swipe of the windshield wipers as a confirmation. You can adjust the sensitivity of the automatic wipers with the dial. Twisting up makes them more sensitive, which means it will take less water to activate. Twisting down, it's less sensitive, so it takes more water to activate. If you'd like to manually control your windshield wipers, just follow the arrows. Bring the stock down once for a low steady wipe, down again for a high steady wipe. Click up to go back to low, up again to turn them off. Notice that when we took manual control of the windshield wipers, it turned off the auto feature. To turn it back on, just push the button on the end of the stock and then adjust your sensitivity. Pull the stock to you to clean the front windshield. Let's take a look at all of the buttons on the steering wheel. Starting on the left side, you have volume for radio and telephone, increase or decrease. You can use the up and down arrows on the left side to move you through your radio presets once they're saved, or change tracks with Bluetooth audio or, or even a CD if you happen to still use CDs. Your mode button will toggle you through AM, FM, satellite, any of your audio sources. If you push and hold, you'll be able to pause or mute your audio. Push and hold again to resume. This is really handy if you are going through a drive through and you don't want to turn on and off your audio or adjust the volume. Just push and hold your voice command button for the onboard voice command system on the vehicle. We'll practice with voice command in just a moment. Answer a call, hang up, or ignore a call. When you push the on hook button to ignore, it sends that call directly to voicemail. Coming to the right side of the steering wheel, all of the buttons in the top portion operate your multi-information display. That's the menu of your instrument panel. If you have a Lexus with a sliding center bezel, push the menu button to open your screen. If you have a fixed gauge cluster, this is your shortcut button. 
and you can assign that shortcut button to your favorite screen in the multi-information display. We'll use the arrows, the enter button, which is the dot button, the return or go back a screen button to operate our system. Let's take a look. At the very top of our screen, we have our outside temperature. We can move to the right to go from our information screen to a compass, a music summary screen, our lane keep assist monitor. Moving to the right again, if you have service related messages or low fuel light, you'll have a message on this screen and our settings screen. Moving to the right again to bring us back to information, notice that if you see a slide bar, that means you can move up or down within that menu. In the information menu, you have a lot of fuel economy information. The most popular piece of information is the range. These fuel economy screens are actually customizable in that setting screen that we just viewed. Continue arrowing down, we have an eco indicator. It's going to light up when you're driving in a fuel efficient way. You also have a pop-up eco indicator that's a little green light that is like a great job. You're driving in a fuel efficient way. Now, this is a GS, so I'm not quite sure that this will be your main focus in this vehicle arrowing down, and you have a G-Force monitor. This is more in line with what you might want to focus on on the GS, since it is a performance-focused vehicle. Tire pressure monitor, a sway warning. If your lane keep assist feature gives you multiple corrections in a row without you taking action, the vehicle becomes concerned that you might be a fatigued driver. It pops up a picture of a coffee cup, it tells you to take rest. Arrowing down, you have an option to make a change for what kind of units that you want displayed. You just push the dot button as indicated to switch from kilometers per hour or miles per hour. It will be reflected in your odometer. Arrowing down for a blank screen if that's what you prefer arrowing down again to come back to the top. Now we could move to the right and explore those menu items, or from the main information screen, we can shortcut to our settings by pushing the left arrow button. Push the dot to open the Lane Keep Assist menu, and this is where you can customize your Lane Keep Assist feature. Push the dot to turn lane centering on or off. Lane centering is going to allow the system to work a little bit harder to keep you in the center of the lane. If you feel like that's too much correction, go ahead and turn it off. Steering assist gives you a little nudge in the right direction if you start to veer out of your lane without your blinker on. There are two types of alerts for the Lane Keep Assist feature. If you do start to veer out of your lane without your blinker on, it can either give you an audible alert or a steering wheel vibration alert. I recommend that you adjust the sensitivity of the feature rather than turning Lane Keep Assist off if you need to get accustomed to having a lane keeping feature. Just push the dot in the middle of all the arrows to toggle through from high or standard. Arrowing down, you can turn the sway warning on or off, and you can adjust the sensitivity of the sway warning from low, high, or standard. Arrow down again, and you'll be back at the top of the Lane Keep Assist menu. Push the Go Back button to move out of that menu. Arrow down for the pre-collision system settings. Push the dot to open. You can turn the pre-collision system on or off. If you do turn it off, you're going to have two warnings on your instrument panel, a written message and an image. Push the go back button and push the dot to turn it back on. This is another system that I recommend you adjust the sensitivity for rather than turn it off. You have three different levels of sensitivity. 
The mid-level is what's standard on the vehicle. Pushing the go back button, come down for blind spot monitor. If you turn it off, you'll no longer see the BSM for blind spot monitor on your dash. When blind spot monitor is turned on, you'll hear the tone for the rear cross traffic alert portion of that feature. If a vehicle is detected in your blind spot, you'll see an indication in your side mirror. If you have your blinker on, that light is going to flash. There's not an audible alert with blind spot monitor. If you're backing up and someone is crossing at the rear of your vehicle, you'll have the visual and audible alert, and that's called rear cross traffic alert. You're being alerted that someone is crossing at the rear of the vehicle. The light will flash and the alert will sound. Arrowing down for clock, we can change from a 12 hour clock to a 24 hour clock, whatever you prefer. Arrowing down for vehicle settings, push the dot to open, your tire pressure monitoring system, scheduled maintenance, and oil maintenance reminders are all items that can be adjusted by a technician after you've had a service completed. Pushing the go back button. Meter settings. Push the dot to open your meter settings. You can change the language of your display from English, French, or Spanish. Pushing go back, you can adjust your unit of measurement depending upon where you live. You'll see it reflected again on your dash. Arrowing down, this is an eco indicator that pops up while you're driving, kind of like a great job, you're driving in a fuel efficient way. You can turn that off if you prefer. The switch settings is a reminder that you have a shortcut button on your steering wheel. The easiest way to customize the switch settings is to actually push and hold the button when you're on your favorite screen. Let's do that now. Push your go back button, arrow to the right, and again, and again. Let's say that the music screen is your favorite. We're going to push and hold, our shortcut button. When you have the message on your dash, switch settings change, it's asking you if you want this to be your new registered shortcut screen. Arrow up and push the dot to select and change. Then, no matter where you've gone in your menu, you can always push your shortcut button to jump right back to your favorite screen. To come back to our settings, arrow to the left, Make sure meter settings is highlighted. Push your dot and moving down, we have our customizable drive information screens. All three screens can be customized. Push the dot to open one and then choose the item that you would like to replace. For example, if you don't want your average fuel economy after reset, Push the dot to select it and then pick something that you would prefer to appear in that spot. Most people really like their range so that they know how many miles they have left on that particular tank of gas. Another popular item, how long the vehicle's been running, elapsed time after start. So let's put elapsed time after start in the bottom spot. Come up to the top spot, push the dot to select it, and let's replace the current fuel economy with our range. Just keep scrolling down until you find what you want. Push the dot to select it. To check and see what this looks like under normal driving conditions, push the go back button to exit the drive info settings screen. Push the go back button again to exit meter settings and now arrow to the right. Now this is your new first drive information screen. How many miles are left in the tank and how long has the vehicle been running? Arrow to the left to come back to settings. Make sure meter settings is highlighted. Push the dot to select 
and come down. You can continue customizing your drive information screens or you can scroll down to your pop-up display. Push the dot to select and these are items that can pop up from any screen as you're driving. Intersection guidance, off or automatic, incoming calls, off or on, and the adjust brightness pop-up display that we saw earlier, off or on. Pushing go back to exit that menu, arrowing down, you can change the needle color. Push the dot to select, arrow down from the blue selection to white, push the dot, and you'll see the change reflected on the needle on your gauge. Push the dot again if you'd like to see the red example. Push the dot again, arrow up if you prefer blue. Arrow down for the rev indicator, push the dot to open. You can turn it on or off. You can also adjust the setting. Push and go back, push go back again, and arrow down for rev peak. You can turn it on or off. Arrowing down, if you select default settings and push the dot, it will clear any customizations and restore the vehicle to the factory default settings. Arrowing down, and you'll be right back at the top of your meter settings. I think it's always a good practice to arrow back so that you're always at the top of a setting screen. Pushing the go back button, arrowing down so that you're back at the top of your main settings menu, and then either push the left or right buttons to move through the menu or push your shortcut button to go back to whatever screen you've saved as your favorite. Your Lane Keep Assist feature is turned on and off by pushing the button. You'll have a message appear on your display and you'll also see the Lane Keep Assist icon to the right of your digital clock. If you have a heads up display, if you turn on your Lane Keep Assist feature, it will take over the left side spot. To monitor your Lane Keep Assist feature in the multi-information display, just arrow over until you see the lane markers. If it's turned off, you'll have a message that it's turned off along with your cruise control. Simply push the button to turn it back on. When you're driving and lane markers are detected, the lines will light up solid. When they're hollow, it means the system hasn't registered the lane markers ahead of you. Make sure to become aware of how the system operates. When you are getting an indication that you're floating out of the lane without your blinker on, you'll also have a visual indication on your display. The final button on the right side of the steering wheel is for setting your following distance with radar cruise control. So let's turn the cruise control on. Your cruise control stop is on the lower right side of your steering column. Cruise control is operated by following the arrows. Push the button in to turn it on or off. Pull down to set or lower your speed. Lift up to resume or increase your speed. Pull it toward you or tap on your brake to cancel. When you turn cruise control on, you'll have a message letting you know that radar cruise is activated. You'll also have the text radar ready and the icon for dynamic radar cruise control. The vehicle image represents the following distance that you'll set between you and the vehicle in front of you. The arrow represents the speed. To adjust your following distance, just push that following distance button. Click through to choose your comfort level. Your following distance is like a buffer zone between you and the vehicle in front of you. You can set long range, mid range, or close range. I recommend that you start out with the longest range first until you get accustomed to it. Once you're more comfortable, you can toggle to a closer distance. Just know that when you turn the vehicle off, generally it will default to the longest range. If you prefer traditional speed only cruise control, you can choose to 
turn that on by pushing and holding instead of pushing and releasing. So we would push and hold, and you'll see the information change from radar cruise to standard cruise. When you see the icon with the arrow only, you know that you're setting speed only. If you see the icon with the arrow and the vehicle, you'll know radar is on and you'll need to set speed and following distance. For paddle shifting, you upshift on the right and downshift on the left. In order to use the paddle shifters, you need to move your gear shift from drive to manual mode. When you're in drive, simply push the gear shift to the left for manual mode. You can also upshift or downshift right on the gearbox. If you've gone to manual mode and you want to get out of it, you can do so at any time. Just bring your gear shift back to the right and into drive. Moving up from the steering wheel, you'll notice three home link buttons to program garage or gate opening. You also have an auto dimming rear view mirror that can be turned off or on. I recommend that you leave it on so that the mirror can dim automatically for you if it detects light approaching at the rear of the vehicle. That's very helpful, especially at night if you're on a road that does not have a lot of ambient lighting. Moving up, you'll see your SOS button for Safety Connect. You'll have a complimentary trial period for Safety Connect and all of the other compatible Lexus Inform connected services. Dome lights are controlled with the touch of a button. You also have the ability to turn the dome lights on manually by pushing the picture that looks like a sun. It will turn on the front and rear cabin center lights. If you would like the dome lights to turn on automatically when you open a door for the vehicle, push the door button. Make sure that it's flush. When it's flush and activated, your interior lights will turn on automatically when a door is open. And they'll turn off a few seconds after the door is closed. You can tilt the back of the moonroof up or down to get some fresh air in the vehicle. And you can open and close on the right hand side. Moving down our center console to the armrest. Feel for the catch, squeeze, slide back and lift up to open. You can slide the tray forward and back or remove it. Taking a look inside, you'll see two USB ports. They can charge as well as play audio from iPhones or iPods. The auxiliary port will play audio from other MP3 players, but it doesn't charge. You also have a 12 volt accessory charger on the left hand side. When you slide the armrest back, you'll find your button to turn on and off your parking sensors. When your parking sensors are turned on, you'll see the green letter P light up on the right top corner of your gauges and the button to raise or lower your rear sunshade. When you put your GS in reverse, if the sunshade is up, it will lower automatically. To operate your drive mode selector, just twist to the left for Eco, twist to the right for Sport S, to the right again for Sport S Plus. Push down for normal and down for the customized mode. You can customize this mode in setup. Your drive mode selector is going to change your throttle response and in the case of Sport S and Sport S Plus, it will engage steering feel, 
If you have an adaptive variable suspension on your vehicle, it will even adjust the suspension feel. Snow mode, give a push and you'll see the indication on your dash. Your remote touch device works like a mouse for a computer and it controls everything on your main screen. You have a map hard button shortcut, a menu button, a go back button to return you to the previous screen, and then these arrows will move you through lists. If you're on the map, they'll even zoom you in and out. Your selector can be moved just with your fingertips. When you've highlighted your desired item, just click down. You can also use the enter buttons to click or select on either side. So you can click with your thumb or your fingers. Rest your palm a little farther back if you prefer to use the enter buttons on the side for selection. If you'd rather make your adjustments and click all in one spot, bring your palm a little forward until your fingers rest comfortably right on your remote touch selector. Coming forward, just press down if you need your cup holders. If you need to clean in this area, you can lift up and remove the divider. This rubber pad also comes out. There's a tab on the corner, so just look or feel for that tab. Makes it a lot easier. And then just work it out. You can clean this and clean inside the cup holder as well. All right, so I would love to tell you uh, to flip this around so you can put the tab where you can see it, but it doesn't fit in the exact same way. So just use that brain of yours to remember that it's there. Put your divider back in until it snaps and then close it shut. Just above your cup holders are your heated and ventilated seats for the driver and the passenger. Just keep that in mind if you have your cup holders open and potentially you have a cup in front of them. Your heated and ventilated seats have an auto mode. So the first time you push the button, auto is going to turn on. You can hear that fan engage. If you want to take over control, just push the button again. There are three levels of fan and three levels of heat. Just keep pushing until you have the setting that you like. The same is true for the passenger side. So notice that first push is auto. So I pushed the heated seat and the vehicle said, not a chance, it's Texas and it's already really hot outside. Based on the temperature that's selected and the outside temperature, the vehicle is going to determine whether or not you need heat or fan if this is being used for climate. But a lot of people like to use the heating component just like a heating pad. So if you are somebody who likes to crank your AC down low, but put the heating pad on because your back is sore, you can do that. Just take over so that you don't see a light by the word auto. Moving up to our hard button shortcuts for climate, temperature adjustment for the driver. Just push on the red arrow to warm it up the blue arrow to cool it down. We have the same for the passenger side. You'll notice that the temperatures can be independent of one another. That's referred to as dual mode. I'll show you how to change that setting in a moment because it gets changed on our main screen. Front defrost, you'll have a light when that comes on and it will automatically default to outside air rear defrost and side mirror defrost. This is helpful if you have to park outside and you have a lot of condensation on your side mirrors in the morning. Auto for the fan and off for the fan. Here's a tip about auto. When you turn auto on for the fan, listen to that. Based on your selected temperature and the outside temperature, it's going to raise and lower the fan speed 
automatically to try to achieve the temperature that you've desired as quickly as possible. If you don't want auto, you can't just push auto again to turn it off. You need to take over the fan, either less fan, more fan, or fan off. Now, when you push fan off, it does turn the entire climate control system off. So if you've pushed auto to maybe cool your car down in the summer or warm it up quickly in the winter, and you're ready to bring it down a notch, just start taking over the fan speed until you have it where you want it. You can also customize where the air is flowing and you just push the button to keep toggling through. This feature is one of the more confusing features in the world of climate control. It's called S-Flow, Smart Flow. It's supposed to help with fuel economy. When you turn S-Flow on, you are canceling flow to the back cabin. You have an icon showing air flowing to the front cabin and an X for no air in the back. This is fine for fuel economy. This is not great in the heat in the summer in places like Texas. If you would like to have air flowing in your entire vehicle, turn this feature off. By turning it off, you turn the air on. When the light is on, the air in the back is off. Where is the air coming from? Recirculating air. Automatic allow the vehicle to choose whether it wants to use recirculating or outside air. It's going to use the smog sensor on the vehicle as well as your speed to make that determination. Outside air, fresh or direct air, completely up to you. I like to use auto. Let's take a look at our on-screen climate controls. Make sure to note that there are two screen versions. When you click on climate from the main menu, it will open the large full climate control menu on the left-hand side. When you click on the climate icon for the split screen or the right side, you'll see a smaller menu on the right-hand side. Here are the differences between large screen climate on the left and the small climate shortcut screen on the right. Both views give you driver temperature, passenger temperature, fan speed, and even airflow mode adjustments. The airflow mode on the left side is going to be operated by clicking on the picture of the arrows for where the air would be flowing. On the small screen on the right side, you just repeatedly click the small icon at the top and you'll see it toggle through. Both screens can turn auto on, the AC compressor on or off, and dual mode on or off. When you turn dual off, you'll sync to a single temperature. Anytime the passenger makes a temperature adjustment, dual will automatically turn on. The left side or large climate control menu has a few additional items. Eco heat and cool if you're focusing on fuel economy and then come to your additional menu to turn on your pollen filter. This is excellent if you need to clean the air in the cabin. You'll hear the fan engage at high speed. It will turn off automatically or you can turn it off when you're ready. Your hazard lights are located right in the center of your climate control buttons. And audio. Our audio power and volume your radio tuner dial is on the right, CD player, it's a single disc player, eject, pause and play. All of the other operation for the CD player is done on your main screen. Arrows to move you through your preset stations or tracks. This is a great tool for your passenger. The driver has the same operation with the arrows on the left side of the steering wheel. Taking a look at some other hard button shortcuts, 
for the audio screen for radio or media. Pushing our radio button pulls up the left side audio screen. If the system is turned off, it will say audio off. Just push the power button to turn it on. At the top of the screen, you have source. Click on that to see all of your audio sources. You can even choose reorder if you have a favorite source that you would like to appear in a particular spot. Just highlight it and click with the arrows to move it where you want it. Once you've made your adjustments, either click the go back soft button on the screen or the go back hard button by your mouse. And now you'll see your changes have been made. If you never listen to CDs, you can push that all the way to the end. If you stream audio via Bluetooth, you might want that on the very top line. There are two different view types for presets. You have six pages either way. Right now, we're in mixed presets. You can always look at the top left corner of your screen to see what view you're in. Mixed presets allows us to save presets from any source in any order. It also allows you to customize how many pages of presets are showing. If you wanted to go to individual presets, you would then have two pages for each source, AM, FM, and satellite. Two pages of satellite are showing now. We can push the radio button or the mode button, and you'll see two pages available for AM, pushing the button again, two pages available for FM. If you have the individual preset view showing, you can't customize the amount of pages. Just be aware of that. Most people really like the mixed preset view once they get accustomed to it. You can save things in any order and then customize how many pages in setup. Let's tune to a radio station. You can turn the radio tuner dial to make your selection or better yet, use voice command. We're going to push and release, wait for the beep, and give our command. Please say a command. Tune to 99.1. Once your station is playing, you'll see it listed right at the top. Then you can use your remote touch device to highlight a spot that you'd like to save it as a radio preset. You can push down and hold the remote touch center controller or use the enter buttons that are located on either side of your remote touch device. Just click and hold until you hear the beep and you see that your favorite station has been assigned to its preset spot. If we wanted to save it in a different location, we could select that location, push and hold, and then we can get something else playing and override what's in that number one spot. You're not able to drag and drop, so go ahead and give another voice command. When you do voice commands for satellite radio, make sure to say tune to and give the channel number. So for example, tune to channel 32. You can also give the name of a channel, tune to watercolors. Keep in mind that with satellite radio, they are frequently changing their programming. So if you try to tune to a station that's no longer available, just check their programming guide and see what their updates are. Info, you'll see information being broadcast by that station. Come to options and you can turn on and off your HD signal, your FM information. You can come to type and search through a list by genre. Pushing the go back button, pushing back to go back just one step, or we could push presets to come to our preset page. Let's take a look again in info at the last few items. You can scan for stations, you can click to view a station list and it will search and populate the information. You can always cancel or refresh at any time. Coming into sound, notice 
that by the treble, mid-range, and bass adjustments, it says FM. That's because we currently have an FM station selected. You can make these customizations for each audio source. So depending on the type of audio you're listening to, whether it's music that would require more treble or more bass, or if it is talk radio and you would prefer to bump up the mid-range and the treble, you just wanna to listen to something that you like on that particular source and make your adjustments and they'll be saved. Just push the go back button. Pushing go back again and we end up on our main menu. So when you see this page to get back to your presets, you have to click presets. One more item I want you to be aware of is tagging. Tagging is a feature that is exclusive to iTunes. iTunes has gone through an enormous amount of changes recently, and it is possible that iTunes tagging is not going to last forever. Tagging can only happen on HD stations. If you click tag, it will store your tag information. It will ask you to wait. The next time you sync your iPhone to your music library in Apple Music, look for tags. To stream music from your phone paired through Bluetooth, you can click Media in the main menu or push the hard button media shortcut just underneath your CD player. The term portable player is referring to whatever device you're using to stream audio, whether it's your smartphone paired through Bluetooth or an iPod or MP3 player. You'll move through tracks either on the screen or with the buttons on the steering wheel or the buttons just below the CD player. You can even click sound to adjust the sound settings for Bluetooth audio. Let's take a look at the navigation system. At the top left corner of your map, you have a compass, and if you click down on the compass, you can toggle through three different map views. When you see the red in for north, that means that the map is fixed with north at the top. So the map is not going to turn as you turn. The circle with the triangle that represents your vehicle will turn. But this can look like the vehicle is driving down the map at times, depending on the direction you're going, it can be a little confusing, but if you prefer to always have north at the top, you have that option. To change your map view, simply click on the compass. Now the map is facing the same direction we are, so as we drive, the map will move and turn, and the circle and triangle will always be moving up on the map screen. Click down on the compass again, and you have a 3D mode. If you see this dark horizon line at the top, that lets you know that you're in 3D mode. It's much more beneficial to use 3D mode if you're in downtown settings because you can actually see building structures. It just helps you to navigate the area. Click again and again until you have the map where you want it. If we come down the left-hand side, our next item is letting you know the perspective. Right now, the system is registering at 700 feet. That means if we were to send a camera up above our car at about 700 feet, this would roughly be our view. If you move the mouse, you'll see a plus and minus on the screen at the bottom left corner. That will allow you to zoom in and out. I, however, think those are kind of tricky buttons to land on, so just use your hard button arrow shortcuts. Pushing the button facing forward to zoom in, the button pointing toward the rear of the vehicle to zoom out or up. Most people prefer to be around 300 or 700 feet for a nice amount of detail. Letting you know that this is a system using GPS, the Global Positioning System, it has traffic information provided by HD, your HD signal. When you see the green, yellow, or red lines around your freeways and major highways, if it has a small arrowhead, that's letting you know traffic flow information, the direction of flow, and the pace. 
Green, it's good and moving. Yellow, it's slow. Red, it's bumper to bumper. If we click on our menu items, you have map mode. These are different views that will pop up automatically while you have a destination programmed in. Push and go back. Map information allows you to turn on point of interest icons. If you're in an area that isn't mapped well, you can turn on route trace. It will leave small little red dots along your path so that you can follow your route out. If you turn route trace on, after you've finished using that route, I would recommend that you come back into map information and turn route trace off. Otherwise, you will always have a little trail of dots as you're driving and it can clutter your screen. When you select to turn it off, it's going to ask you if you want to keep what's been recorded, then you would click yes. If you want to clear your map, click no. Back to our menu, back to map information, Make sure that you have traffic information and speed limit information turned on. You'll see a small little light to the left. If those items are not turned on, then your speed limit information and traffic flow information will not be able to appear on your screen. It's helpful to have that information when it's available. Coming to destination, this is a great shortcut right on the screen. If the vehicle's in motion, you're not going to be able to access all of these features, so it's great to learn how to do navigation voice commands. But if you are at a stop, you can click to type in an address, search for a point of interest, contact Destination Assist. You'll have a complimentary trial period for Destination Assist. That's a live operator that's going to help you by putting in an address or point of interest remotely. Previous destinations will hold up to 100 searches. Clicking on more for the next page, you can save an address book. This does not sync with the address book in your smartphone. Be aware of that. You can search for emergency locations like police stations, Lexus dealership, hospitals, fire stations, etc. You can also search for an intersection or a freeway entrance or exit number. Clicking on map is a redundancy for searching from the map screen. Clicking on coordinates this is helpful if you know the latitude and longitude for maybe a put-in if you like to fish or surf and don't know that you would be doing that in your GS. So not quite sure why they offer that in this vehicle, but it's there if you need it. Coming back to our main screen at the bottom on the left, you have a go home shortcut. I always recommend that you save something close to your home rather than your exact house, especially if you valet park. Just for safety reasons, it's always better for people not to have access to your home and your car. You have five presets for addresses. Let's do some voice commands for navigation. We'll be pushing our talk button and waiting for the beep. Please say a command. Enter an address. Please say the full address. 9200 Grogan's Mill Road, Spring, Texas. 9200 Grogan's Mill Road, Spring, Texas. Is this correct? Yes. Once it calculates our route, we can start to drive, or if you're sitting still, you can review your route options, push and go back. You can also come in to edit route. This is important to do. Come to preferences. Once you set your preferences, it will remember them. 
But if you don't have a toll tag or you prefer not to take toll roads, make sure to deselect toll roads. But if you have a toll tag and you want to take toll roads, you need to turn them on. Otherwise, the system is going to try to get you to your location without toll roads. That could be kind of annoying depending on where you are, but imagine if your freeways were turned off. Okay, that would not be a pleasant trip. Make sure you have your preferences set the way you want them. Click OK and they'll be saved. Let's do a few more navigation voice commands. Please say a command. Find Starbucks. Please say the list number. Number one. Is this correct? Yes. Would you like to go directly or add it to your existing route? Add to route. This is going to give me an opportunity to customize what order I would like to go in if I'm putting in multiple destinations. So I can either accept that I want to go to my first location first and my second location second. If I want to change that, click Edit Route. Reorder. If I don't want to go to Starbucks first, if I wanted to go after my errand, I can click Move Down and then OK once I have it where I want it. If you have a lot of destinations to plug in, either for a specific trip or your day, this is a really good tool to know. Please proceed to the highlighted route, then the route guidance will start. Now check this out. If I say cancel route, it's going to clear everything. But watch this. Please say a command. Delete destination. Please say the list number of the one you want to delete. Number two. Now I only have one destination in my route. If you work in real estate or outside sales and you plug a lot of items in and you want to just remove that one or two because maybe you've had a cancellation or a change to your appointments in that day, this is an excellent resource. Please proceed to the highlighted route, then the route guidance will start. So I clicked OK. You could also just start to drive. The voice command for go home is, you guessed it, go home. Once you're on your way, if you no longer need navigation support, you can either click destination and click delete destination right at the top, or you guessed it, you can use voice command. Please say a command. Delete destination. Would you like to delete destination? Yes. Easy as that. Another option for clearing your route. Please say a command. Cancel route. Then you don't even have to give the confirmation to delete your destination. Please say a command. Previous destinations. Please say the list number. Number one. When you voice command previous destinations, it will show you your five most recent searches. Again, start to drive or click OK to launch your route. Please proceed to the highlighted route, then the route guidance will start. If you have the map open on the left hand side and you would like it to go to full screen, just move your highlighter back on top of the map. You'll see the full screen icon appear at the top right corner. Click down and then your map will go back to full screen. The only time the full screen icon isn't visible is if you're in a Bluetooth phone call. When you end the phone call, you'll be able to go back to full screen. If your vehicle is low on fuel, you'll have a warning on the left side in your multi-information display, a low fuel light, by your fuel gauge and your navigation system will pop up suggestions for nearby gas stations. When you're ready to pair a phone, start at Setup rather than on the phone menu. Click down 
and then come to Bluetooth. Click Yes, and then operate your smartphone. Come to Settings, open the Bluetooth menu, and then wait for your phone to locate the system on the vehicle. Lexus GS. Select right on the words Lexus GS, and then click Pair and allow to have your contacts and call history transfer to the vehicle. Once the pairing is confirmed, come back to your iPhone and click the I for information and show notifications to allow text messages to transfer to allow text messaging on the vehicle. If you're pairing an Android phone, you'll be prompted for text preferences during the pairing process. From this screen, you can add an additional phone to the system. It will ask you to disconnect other devices before you do that, so just click Yes. Coming down to System Settings, if you have multiple devices paired to the phone and you'd like to prioritize a device, click Preferred Device Settings. Select On, and then tell the vehicle which phone should be the default phone and which phone should be used as the default audio player. That means when both phones are in the vehicle, you'll have an automatic default to that particular phone. So if you have a personal phone that you would like to have maybe as your audio player and a work phone that you needed to have for making phone calls, you can do that. You can also remove a phone from the system. If you get a new phone, even if it's the same phone number, you want to come in and click Remove and then take out the connection for the old phone. Then you can come back and add a new device. When you make a phone call through Bluetooth, just click and release, wait for the beep, and say call, and give the name of the person exactly as they're listed in your contact list. When you're using an iPhone in your GS, you have an additional type of voice command. It's called the Mobile Assistant, or Siri Eyes Free. You'll access it with the telephone off hook button, and you're going to push and hold, just like you would with Siri on your iPhone. The most popular use for the Mobile Assistant is texting via voice. Here's how. Send a text to Ava. What do you want to say? Hi, Ava. I hope you have a great day. Your message to Ava says, Hi, Ava. I hope you have a great day. Ready to send it? Change it. What do you want to say? Hi, Ava. Period. I hope you have a great day! Exclamation point. Your message to Ava says, Hi, Ava. I hope you have a great day. Ready to send it? Yes. Okay, it's sent. So you can say send, yes, change it, add to it. If you receive a text, you can push and hold the off hook button and reply. Just follow the prompts with Siri. So the trick to keep in mind is the voice command for the onboard Lexus systems are through the talk button. That's click and release. The voice command for Siri is through the phone. Push and hold on the phone button. Either way, you need to always wait for the listening tones and then give your command. Coming back to our main menu to look at the Lexus app suite. If we click to select, you will get a message reminding you that you need to be connected via Bluetooth and you need to have the app open with an account logged in on your compatible phone. You can click Don't Tell Me Again and then click OK to open the Lexus app suite. Make sure the app is open and logged in on your paired phone. Click on Lexus app suite on the main menu. If you're prompted for an update, go ahead and follow the steps to complete the update. If you'd like to continue to work with 
different items on the vehicle while the update is in progress, select Download in Background. When the download is complete, click Install and Continue. You can also choose to install in the background if you prefer. Select OK when it's complete and then you'll see your apps available on screen. The newest item is the Alexa app. As long as you have apps like Alexa or iHeartRadio linked, you'll be able to use them on the screen. Keep in mind that everything about the app suite really is operating within the phone, but it's projected onto your car screen. You'll have a reminder about data services since this is using your cellular data. And then a reminder to link your Amazon account in the app suite on your phone. On the next page, you have an additional music app, but you can put these apps in any order. Just click reorder, select the app, and then move it wherever you would like. Click OK when you're finished. Coming back to our main menu to information. Click on Info. You will have fuel economy information. Pressing the Go Back button. Traffic incident information, including a traffic incident list for traffic events that are in your particular area. The predictive traffic map allows you to look ahead at the traffic flow pattern based on where the vehicle is located. So as we can see right now, it's flowing well going north, very backed up going south. If we project forward by clicking on the plus sign by 15 minute increments, Within 15 minutes, the roadway going south is clear. So there must be something going on on that spot that they're going to be able to clear within 15 minutes. We can go ahead as far as 45 minutes. So we can see a little bit in the future, pretty cool. You can click on the go back soft button on the screen or push the hard button down by your main menu. Push again to return to our information menu. The most popular item in the info menu is weather. This is on navigation vehicles only. You have a current forecast, three day, where you can actually advance forward and look at more details about those three days and a six and 12 hour breakdown of the current day. Recently checked locations, national cities list, other local cities, and a Doppler weather map. It looks like there's a little rain to the east of our location. All of this information is provided by the Weather Channel. It also requires your HD signal, which means you have to have HD turned on in your radio settings. Pushing go back. You can check your vehicle alert history if you've had service alerts on your vehicle. Those alerts are also emailed to you as long as you have your Service Connect settings turned on for you to receive email notifications about the health report of your Lexus. Push Menu. Our final item in our main menu is Setup. Coming to General, we can do things like adjust the clock. Very important if you live in a state that participates in daylight saving time. You'll want to come in and turn it on or off. A lot of people ask about the auto adjust by GPS feature. What that's doing is selecting your time zone for you. 
This also allows you to manually set your clock if you would prefer to allow the clock to be a little bit ahead. Just turn auto adjust by GPS off and then make the adjustments that you would like. Otherwise, make sure to leave auto adjust by GPS turned on. Your clock time is linked and operated through your settings on the main menu. Push and go back. You can change things like the language of the display, units of measurement, your button color, keyboard layout. On this vehicle, you can even customize the startup image. Make sure to follow the instructions in the owner's manual so that you save the file correctly so the vehicle can recognize it. The main thing I'd like to show you here is something called auto screen change. When auto screen change is turned on, the vehicle will automatically change the screen back to the map or to the previous menu, depending on what you had open on the screen. Now this is helpful if you like the map to come back on automatically, but if you would like it to stay on, for example, your radio screen. You'll need to turn auto screen change off because watch what happens. If I don't take any action on the screen after just a moment, it's going to default right back to the map. To prevent that from happening, come back to setup, general, and scroll to the second page to turn auto screen change off. Now you're in charge of what's on your screen. There are additional settings that you can customize in the general menu. Feedback force is what you would want to change if you're having trouble using the mouse, the remote touch device. Feedback force is what allows the mouse to be attracted to clickable surfaces. So if you feel like it's too hard to maneuver the highlighter, Select Feedback Force and turn it all the way down, making it the least sensitive. Then you'll be able to really easily move your mouse across the screen. And then the opposite would be the case. If you felt like it moved too quickly, you could increase the Feedback Force and then it will slow the mouse down as you move it across the screen. Pushing the go back button, coming to voice, you can adjust the volume of the onboard voice system and customize which items have the voice guidance turned on. Pushing go back, Bluetooth is where we pair to Bluetooth phone. Audio is where you can customize the number of radio preset pages that you have showing in the mixed preset view. If you don't have very many favorite radio stations, simplify your life. Come down to just one page of radio presets. If you have a lot, max it out. 36 presets, six pages total. Pushing go back, go back again, Traffic. You can customize additional settings for your traffic information. This is going to integrate with your navigation system. Pushing go back and then very carefully landing on the arrow that takes you to the next page. Navigation is where we come to customize our go home shortcut. When you set your home location, Make sure to remember to set something close by rather than your exact home address. You can save preset destinations, customize your address book, even set areas to avoid. You can delete previous destinations once you have some in the system. Right now, this vehicle doesn't have any previous destinations, so that item is grayed out. It's not selectable. If you come to Detailed Navi Settings, this is where you can hide pop-up information or even turn off that low fuel warning that we looked at before. Pushing Go Back, Go Back Again, Vehicle. You can set 
maintenance detailed reminders, but keep in mind the vehicle is going to automatically notify you every 5,000 miles for service. You should always service your vehicle every six months or 5,000 miles, whichever comes first. Coming to vehicle customization, door lock settings is where you can tell the smart access system which door or doors you would like to unlock when you put your hand in the driver's door handle. Do you want it to open the entire vehicle or the driver's door only? Another item that is nice to customize is the automatic door unlock. In this configuration, the entire GS is going to unlock when you shift into park. You can change that to have it unlock by opening the driver's door or turn it off. So when you shift into park, the GS will stay locked and will only open each door as it is opened. Pushing go back, go back again. Climate settings. Your smog sensor sensitivity is something that you could consider adjusting depending on where you live. Go back. Light settings can be adjusted if you would like your headlamps to come on sooner when it begins to get dark. You can increase the sensitivity of your headlamp sensor. Pushing go back and coming to other vehicle settings. Driver's seat easy exit has a full, partial, or off setting. This is the system that allows the seat to slide back and the steering wheel to tilt up and away when you turn off your Lexus. Pushing go back, go back again, go back a final time. Coming down to Lexus Park Assist, these are the settings for your parking sensors. You can adjust the volume of the beep. You can choose to turn the display notification off. And you can customize the sensitivity for the front and rear sensors. Pushing go back to backup camera guideline settings. Most people prefer to have the dynamic grid lines that show your indicated path as you turn your wheel. That's the setting at the top with the yellow lines. The setting that has the blue lines is your turn angle. So if you were to turn your wheel all the way to the left or to the right, it's going to be your full angle of turn. The red line means you're getting awfully close to your bumper. In fact, you're inches away. I highly recommend you use it on the full setting, which is at the top. Shift and reverse to see your selection. When you have the dynamic line selected and you begin to turn, you'll see your intended path. When the yellow lines are directly on top of the blue lines, you know your wheels are straight. Back to park and pushing go back to save. Pushing go back again to exit vehicle settings and you can come in to phone settings. You can connect a phone that's already paired to the vehicle, customize the sounds that the phone makes in the car, make adjustments to your contacts or call history transfer, or notifications, letting you know when a call comes into the vehicle. Pressing go back, Within the Lexus app suite, you can customize the voice volume and you can customize that data notification message. You can either change it to pop up every time the system is used, if you really need a reminder about your data usage, or select for it to never display. Pushing go back, go back again and we come to our last item, data services. Allowing data to download via HD and mobile will give you the strongest connection. Take a look at the right side of the screen for all of the items that can be opened in split screen mode. You have a map, a music summary screen, quick dials are the new speed dials, but you know me, I highly recommend making phone calls by voice command. 
fuel consumption information like we saw in our information menu and climate control. We have our map on the left and our climate controls on the right. You can easily access anything you need. Hopefully this answers any questions you may have had about your Lexus GS. If your vehicle has slightly different equipment and you have questions or we weren't able to review it here today, make sure to leave a comment below and I'll be happy to get back to you. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time.